SJB hits back at Fonseca for his public stunt against Sajith. Sajith worried by small crowds. Godahewa Jayasumana give the slip. Ranil goes to Kelania University disregarding IUSF threats. Millions go missing from party fund. The leader, Deshita Magakiana, Prorti Belagasma. SJB hits back at Fonseca for his public stunt against Sajith. Political alliances mushroom as never before. But for how long will they last? Keeping them intact is the real challenge. Already, some of these alliances formed to target the presidential polls are in complete disarray. Not only that, some parties have lost their existing unity after accepting almost anyone who comes in their way. The most recent one was reported from the SJB. On the 29th, Sajith accepted ex-army chief Daya Ratnayake and appointed him his senior advisor on state policies. He is also tipped to be posted as the Maharagama electoral organizer. It was Sujiwa Senasinghe and Lakshman Fonseca who brokered the deal. Posting on Facebook, Gota's advisor Eranda Ginige said, Sajith is adept at showing one the door. Sajith slapped Fonseca on one cheek by accepting Boniface Pereira. Now, his slap on the field marshal's other cheek left the latter fuming. Both Boniface and Daya are his historic enemies, said Ginniger. The leader TV broke the news that Fonseca, the SJB chairman, has become enraged by Daya's arrival. Just as we predicted, he held a media briefing on Wednesday and declared war, telling Sajith to prepare for consequences if Daya is not removed. Fonseca claimed he has the support of Maduma Bandara, Harsha, Iran and Kabir. Even the General Secretary Maduma Bandara is against Daya, he said, adding that he will continue to work against the appointment without leaving the party. Fonseca said the working committee has not given an empty cheque to the leader to accept Rajapaksa henchman to the SJB. <laughs> It seems he decided to quit the party soon after he got to know about Daya's arrival, but his advisor Senaka Silva immediately contacted several persons. From a high office in the government, he received a message not to allow Fonseca to leave the SJB. That reversed Fonseca's decision, who at the time was drafting his resignation letter. Early Wednesday morning, an order came to the opposition leader's office from a SJB bigwig to start a social media campaign to expose Fonseca's character. Now, a campaign is on to demand his ouster from the party. What Fonseca claims is true, that Dyer, then in a top army position, was involved in the legal process for the military tribunal that sent him to jail. But Sajith took it as a warning when Fonseca started saying some time ago that he is fit even to be the SJB leader. It may be intentional that he accepted two sworn enemies of Fonseca. As we understand, Fonseca is a person who cannot do politics collectively. He believes himself to be the big shot above all. 
He made every insult possible against the then president and the defense secretary, who even appointed him the commander by sending his predecessor on early retirement. However, he previously said that the war would not have ended if not for those two. Fonseca even ridiculed the Navy commander, allied with NGOs and other foreign agents against the National Intelligence Service, and made a white flag claim during electioneering with his eyes on the presidency. That paved the way for war crimes accusations against Sri Lanka from the international community. He even insulted Sajith's father with claims of arming the LTTE. Knowing all these, what Sajith has done now is to cut Fonseca's wings to render him powerless. But the biggest question of all is, knowing the man's real self as to why Fonseca was made chairman of the SJB. Sajith worried by small crowds, Godahewa Jayasumana give the slip. On the 31st, the president called for an intelligence report on the SJB's anti-government protest in Colombo on the previous day. The report came in a matter of hours. It said a maximum 7,000 were in attendance, despite SJB plans to bring in 25,000, which was later reduced to 15,000. There was no one from the estates. Mujibur, Marikar and Maduma Bandara organised the protest. The plan was to gather the protesters at Campbell Park, Sirisena Grounds and Viharamaha Devi Park. The venue of the rally was kept a secret. Not even Sajith's bodyguards or campaign manager Senasinghi knew it. By the afternoon, intelligence agencies got to know about their whereabouts. According to their report, Sajith was worried by the small crowds in attendance and had berated the organisers. The rudderless participants had left in disgust. Fonseca told Sirasa that not even 5,000 had come. Notable was the absence of all the six FPC MPs who signed an alliance pact with the SJB last December, despite being invited. The truth came out last. The six are concerned by the fact that none of the SJB stalwarts have officially accepted their agreement. Jaya Sumana has spoken against it. Another alliance that was due to be launched on January 8th has been put off indefinitely. Many are now thinking twice before joining hands with the SJB. An undecided Jaya Sumana has even gone to Roshan Rana Singhi's office at the launch of his new political movement at Gangodawila in Nugagoda. Roshan is making plans for an alliance without Ranil, Sajith and AKD. It is not yet known if it is an alliance itself or an attempt to ally with someone else. It seems the SJB is spoiling whatever chances it may have, mainly due to internal divisions. Ranil goes to Kelania University disregarding IUSF threats. The Inter-University Students' Federation staged a protest vowing not to allow Ranil to set foot on Kelania University. He did not take that seriously, went there with his men and returned in one piece. That is the gist of what Ginnigay said in yet another FB post. The university invited Ranil a couple of months ago to be the chief guest at the opening of the new building complex at the Postgraduate Pali and Buddhist Studies Institute on the 31st. But the President's Security Division was vague even by the afternoon of the previous day whether to take him there. That was because students blocked the Colombo Candy Road and protested against him. They even laid siege of the administrative complex. In the end, President's Chief of Staff and National Security Advisor Sagala Ratnayaka took a top PSD officer to Ranil. The President remarked, I too booed when I was in university. Later on, I was booed at. A President should attend when invited by a university. I am going to Kelania tomorrow. It is your duty to take me there. Subsequently, he went there and opened the building complex. Education is the ultimate victim of certain acts by so-called student movements. It is a sign of immaturity to oppose something good. Also, it is bad for the image if people believe universities to be uncleared zones. Millions go missing from party fund. There is this chatty gentleman who was stripped from his top position in a leading party. He is yet to comment about rumours that he will run for president. But big shots in his previous party now say millions of rupees in its fund have gone missing during the period of that gentleman. So far, he has been unable to account for the missing money. Sources at Dali Road say the party is going to take legal action against him to it find out. That is the fate that befalls persons with a Dayabara Siriawa. All these go to show that elections in 2024 will be completely different from all the past ones.
That is why we keep on saying that it is through a super political game, only that one can emerge victorious this time. That's it for today.